I'm, I'm hearing some noise. I'm hearing some, some like static noise. Okay, can you hear now better? Yeah, yeah, now I don't hear okay. the noise. Uh, so, good evening. Bad guys at documentary. Before we go to season five, episode eight, I'm delighted to be joined today by the one and only Bo Binningsley, who played the role of Owens uh, in that episode, one of the arch, arch uh, nemesis of the A-team. The A-team, obviously, on that episode, it was all to do about AJ Bancroft and uh, Templeton Peck, uh, Dirk Benedict, finding out that he was the son of a, a notorious sort of... Uh, con man in AJ Bancroft and uh, also uh, finding out that he's a half twin sister for the very first time and uh, owns the character worked under the congressman uh, Jacob Edwards who was played uh, by John Carter I suppose uh, Bo in terms of nostalgia in terms of memories you have had an illustrious uh, career so far how does the A-team rank in terms of everything you've done? Is this definitely one of the highlights so far of your career? It definitely is, Jim. And hello, everybody out there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a highlight because, you know, in the 80s, we did um, a lot of, uh, I guess you can call them live action cartoons. And the, the A-team was kind of like that. So uh, during, in the 80s, we did a lot of, uh, act, we had a lot of action in TV. Uh, a lot of, a lot, so there were a lot of stunts. Uh, car chases and car crashes and fights and that type of thing. So the, uh, it was it was a lot of fun. And in, interestingly enough, the director of our episode was James Darren, who was a singer um, back back in our day. I don't know if, if folks in Ireland know that, but yeah, he was a singer. And I met Jim uh, on the set of T.J. Hooker. I don't know if you're familiar with that show. I've heard of it. Yeah, everyone's heard of T.J. Hooker. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was uh, William Shatner was the star of that show, yeah. you know, C Captain Kirk. And uh, so uh, Jimmy Darren was one of the series regulars there. And when I went into, uh, I mean, when I went into audition for A Team, Jimmy was in the room because he was directing. <laughs> and I mean, so we had, and we bonded, you know, we bonded when I was doing uh, TJ Hooker. And so it was, a, it was a, a, a great surprise to see that Jimmy was directing that episode of A Team. Uh, so it was like kind of an old home week in a certain way. Uh, so yeah, that, it, so it started out on, on a good on a good note. I was uh, happy to be cast in it and uh, to uh, to do a show that had a lot of physical of physical action in it. <laughs> the first my first scene, I don't know if you remember, but my first scene, um, we got cream with these uh, fire extinguishers and they <laughs> they had yeah. whipped cream whipped cream there. And I remember Jimmy asked me, he says, Bo, you know, I had a stunt double. And uh, so Jimmy said, Bo, I, if you could, I'd really like you to do your stunts so we can get some close-ups on your face and things, you know? So I said, yeah, well, I'll do my, I'll do my best, you know? I mean, there's a reason we have st stunt doubles. Those guys are really good at what they do and, you know, taking blows and, and beating their bodies up. So, but I told him, yeah. And so that was the first stunt. And so that was, that kind of set the tone for it. I, I got uh, whipped creamed and, and we were on the stairwell, so my guys were all falling down the stairs and slipping and falling and stuff. And, and after we did that scene, I was thinking, yeah, this is fun. This is fun. I like, I like you know, it's like when you're a child and, and you're you're pretending to do something, you just pretend that and you, you know, you pretend to be a cop, you pretend to be a, a soldier or a doctor. And uh, so there, there I was. Uh, so yeah, that was, a, that was a lot of fun. And I enjoyed meeting Mr. T because and he was a, uh, you know, he was a uh, quite a quite a celebrity at that time. And uh, Bo, in terms of your memories, uh, I suppose walking on the set uh, on the A team for the very first time, were you taken back by the sort of uh, professionalism and the nature? Everything seemed to be so smooth, so organized. Uh, no <laughs> expense was left uh, unturned for guest star actors as well. From what I'm hearing, uh, they were treated uh, with all the the norms that uh, the stars of the show will get in terms of how they were looked after. And was that your own experience of you fond memories of how you were looked after from the first time you arrived on the set of the A team until the time you departed? That was exactly my experience. As a matter of fact, Stephen J. Cannell, who was the executive producer of, he created uh, the A team, the show. Uh, he was the first producer in Hollywood who to raise the, the uh, pay for 
the guest actors. Okay. Uh, yeah, at that time, uh, they call it what they, they call it the top of the show, which is the maximum money you can make for the week, you know, we're working on the show. And um, I remember, I think at that time, the top of the show was like $2,500 and he raised it voluntarily to 3,500. So, okay. um, and you know, he did it of his own uh, volition. There was no pressure from the union or anything. So that that began when I signed my contract. I said, "Oh, this is nice. <laughs> you know, I like this," and um, and that was the that was the, my experience all the way through. All the crew and the cast, everybody was very uh, um, accommodating. They treated us extremely well. You know, when you go into a, a to do a guest spot on a TV series, you, you're like going to um, into a family. You know, they, they all know each other and they've been spending time with each other. And so some sets, uh, you, you, you go in and you, they immediately make you feel comfortable. And that's what happened uh, on 18. You know, there's some sets you, you never did. I never did feel comfortable because I, you know, I wasn't treated as well as I was treated on 18. So they, uh, that was a wonderful experience. And I, I felt like I was uh, immediately part of the gang. And I remember when I, my first, my first day on the set, I, I talked to T because you know I have a I have a son, and and I told him when I I got I booked the show. I, my son said, "Make sure you get me an autograph of Mr. T," and so yeah. I said, "I definitely will, definitely will." So the first day I asked T, uh, I said, "You know, I, I want to get a, an autograph photo for my son," and he said, "Oh, I don't know, I don't do, I don't know. It might be a hard thing." And I said, "What? You got to be crazy!" And I I went I went strong on him. I said. You bet you give me an autograph or there's going to be, you're going to have to pay, pal. You know, and he said, oh, yeah, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. And then um, a couple of days later, I think I worked about seven or eight days on the show. And a couple of days later, he came himself with a stack of photos signed. And he said, OK, this is for your son. And he can give I have a bunch for it so he can give to his friends. So so it was so he made my son a hit in, in a hit in the neighborhood and at school because he gave he gave uh, autographed photos of Mr. T to his friends. I suppose that uh, Bo, in, in terms of that, you mentioned uh, the celebrity status of some of the A, -A team uh, cast as sort of such, and uh, obviously uh, George Papard was a massive star in terms of Breakfast at Tiffany's, and uh, one of the big sort of four or five in the industry in the eighties. Uh, Dirk Benedict had came off uh, playing Starbuck in the original Battlestar Galactica, and you mentioned Mr. T in terms of his popularity coming from the wrestling background. But one of the stars probably of the show was uh, probably unknown at that time was Dwight Schultz coming from a theatre background who played Murdoch and uh, his range of uh, his acting in terms of going from high to low and his cast but most people say about uh, Dwight Schultz when you meet him uh, in person that he's probably one of the most nicest, soundest uh, persons that you'll ever meet in 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 lifetime, he couldn't be more uh, supportive and so, so intelligent and so refined and uh, so different from his character Murdoch. And was that something that you witnessed? Did you have a time to interact with Dwight? Yeah, I interacted a bit. Interacted a bit with Dwight, and what you said was exactly right. Uh, he was a wonderful guy. You felt immediately felt comfortable with him. Uh, you know, because some people at the height of their celebrity when they're having a TV show. It kind of goes to their head, but uh, and definitely not with Dwight. And he was completely different from his character. You know, he's a, a very intelligent man, uh, a caring, sincere human being. So uh, I enjoyed, we had nice chats and he was one of those people who was interested in me. You know, as celebrities, we're often talking about ourselves. And so it's nice to run into a, a celebrity who is interested in other people. So uh, that was one of the characteristics characteristics that I uh, enjoyed about Dwight that uh, he you know he wanted to know about my background and we you know where I was from and you know wh wh where I grew up all of that so uh, yeah Dwight was uh, Dwight was terrific and I suppose Bo your character owns uh, what was your sort of take on him the way I saw him portrayal watching that episode he almost felt like a bodyguard of the president that he was under orders to, to serve his sort of command and whatever orders he got uh, that was the orders he took. He didn't dare to sort of question the sort of integrity of the orders. It, it was a job job to him. Whatever commands he got from whoever was in charge, he was going to follow him. And uh, was that your what sort of was your take on Owens? How did you want to portray him? Was it exactly like that? 
a, a bodyguard or the main protector of a, a presidential figure or congressman? Was that the aim that you were going for in terms of how you wanted to portray him? Exactly. And, you know, I, tr I tried to, as, a, as an actor, you try to find something within yourself that is similar to the character. Well, um, <laughs> I had a bit of difficulty trying to find some a similarity between myself and Owens, you know, because I'm a law-abiding citizen. Uh, but yeah, that's exactly it. it and you know, with those guys, the, the 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 bottom line is the money. The bad, the, the head bad guy pays his goons, so to speak. And uh, and so we are committed to do what we were doing because we're getting paid, not necessarily because we're committed to the to to the task. And uh, so that was that was Owen's motivation. That was my motivation because I had to do those those terrible things, and uh, because I was getting paid for it, and I wanted to keep my job. And a lot of times, Bob bosses, if you don't do what you're told to do, then they eliminate you. So those would be the two considerations for Owens that uh, he didn't want to make the boss mad, and um, he wanted to get paid. So uh, I'll tell you a quick. Say, I don't know if you remember the scene. There was a scene where Owens was being steamed. They, um, oh, yes. Yeah, he was in the steamer. Folks out there, years ago, they used to have these steamers where you get in up to your neck and they put the steam in there and so you can lose weight. So what they were doing, they put me in one of those steamers to steam the information out of me. And so George, I remember George had a line something like 130 degrees. Let's let's see uh, if we can get some information out of him. And we do the scene. We, re we rehearse the scene. And then, and then we were going to shoot the scene. And then when it came to T's line, there was silence. So Jimmy, Jimmy Darren, the director, he, he said, cut, cut. He said, T, you're killing me. What's going on here? Because that happened a couple of times. And so T said, I, I, I know my lines. I just don't know when to say them. <laughs> <laughs> so I told T, I said, because they that was actually working. You know, they had that yeah. steamer was going. It wasn't pretend. And I told her, I said, T, come on, help out a brother, man. I'm dying in here. Just say your lines so we can get over with this, get over this scene. <laughs> And I suppose uh, in terms of that storyline of the A-Team, it was one of those poignant episodes. Uh, it was shown uh, particularly as tight. It's probably one of the most uh, poignant because uh, it discovers the whole mystery around Faceman's uh, father at Templeton Peck. So probably one of the most highlighted team episodes of uh, the A-Team because it sort of ends on a sad note. Normally there's a good, jolly sort of atmosphere in terms of the A-Team, but... Uh, it sort of ends in a sort of a premise, although the the bad guys like yourself are apprehended. We saw we almost see that there's no, it's not a happy ending in terms of riding off uh, towards the sunset as well. So in terms of the storyline, it was very well thought of, but very well done as sort of such as well. So it kept uh, people gripped from both sides in terms of what the bad guy's next move, but what was going to center around uh, Dirk's uh, outcome as well. Would he get to know his, or speak to his father? Yeah, that was, uh, th that was poignant. And uh, just a little side note, Jeff Corey, who played his father, was a, was a very prominent acting coach here in, 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 in uh, Los Angeles. And um, so, as a matter of fact, I had met uh, Michael Douglas uh, a few years before that up in San Francisco when he's doing a show and I had asked him about acting coaches when I went to LA and Jeff Corey was one of the was 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 one of the acting coaches that he suggested to me so uh, that's just a little a little background that your, your audience might enjoy enjoy knowing but yeah it was a it was a poignant episode which as you mentioned it kind of made it stand out from uh, many of the other A-team episodes it was kind of like light and fluffy but uh, our, our episode was, was serious. And, um, and it had kind of a, a mixed ending, as you, as you indicated, because uh, uh, Jeff's character passed away. Uh, and uh, Dirk, uh, you know, did meet his father, but he didn't know it was his father at the time. So that, you know, if you empathize with that and put yourself in his position, that would be, you know, that's very, very sad. But the, you know, the upside is he met his, he met his half sister. So, um, you know, that kind of tempered that that sadness a bit, but yeah, it was an it was an emotional episode from that standpoint, which made it stand out from many of the other A Team episodes. I suppose, uh, Bo, I'm going to finish off now by asking you a sort of question as such, and probably you'd have to rack your brains for this now. Uh, in terms, of, let's pretend there was an A Team bad guy sort of encyclopedia as such, and they put your character owns into it. 
and they left two blank sentences underneath. And the people who were producing the cyclopedia, they rang your talent agent who got in touch with you, with you and they asked you, having portrayed the character owns Bo Billingsley, uh, to, to write those two sentences underneath to, uh, to describe him. Uh, what would you like those two sentences to read? Owens was not too good at his job, but Bo Billingsley enjoyed playing him. <laughs> that's a that's a good take uh bo billingsley an absolute pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of your time on the a team uh you appeared as the arch uh, nemesis to the a team owns you appeared in season five uh episode eight and uh just a quick side note as well you also appeared an incident at crystal lake in May 19, May 14th, uh, which aired in May 14th, 1985, season three, episode 25, you appeared as the armored car guards, but we all remember you for your role as Owens in the A-Team. Uh, Bo, uh, a pleasure talking to you. Uh, there was only one Owens in the A-Team. You hold that uh, prestige and a uh, pleasure talking to you, uh, Bo Benningsley, and we wish you a prosperous 2021. Thank you very much, Jim, and I wish you a prosperous and healthy 2021 and all of your listeners out there. Cheers. Take care, Bo. Take care.